Yeah, welcome to the meeting. Happy to see all of you here. Ruth Orieko, how are you? Nice to see you. Yeah, please shout a hello, hello, hello. Let me see who is in the in the meeting. Who is come? Who's come early? Sava, who is Sava? Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Nice to see you. I miss you people so much. Edna, hello, hello, hello Rooney. <laughs> hello, Ruth. Thank you. Hello to you. Yeah. Maybe you, Ruth, you can start us off with a word of prayer as the others continue joining the meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ruth. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you this evening for being our Father. Jehovah Lord, we want to start our session. May you come down and be with us. May you help each and every one of us. May the knowledge we get here help us move and understand more, Jehovah Lord. Be with our teachers and may you bless them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for those indicating where they are coming from. Uh, Rooney, I can see you're coming from Kenya. Thank you. Today we will be having guests from Ghana, mostly. I have guests from Ghana. Uh, the usual ones, Zimbabwe. Let me check who else said they were joining. Of course, I have a team from Canada just joining the meeting to learn. They said they just want to be silent listeners, and I respect that. Uh, thank you so much for joining the meeting. Ali, enough. Yeah, this is so good. Wahundura, you are there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Nice to see you there. Thank you, Wahundura. How is the band? <laughs> I miss the band. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much. Okay. Last last week we we started off with um, curriculum development. That is session four, and we were not able to finish because there was a lot. There is a lot to discuss when it comes to curriculum development for ESD. So I appreciate everyone on board. Yeah, I have a guest from South Africa. Awesome, thank you so much. And um, this is all that we covered. And if you want the details, definitely you will get them on the, on the recording that I shared. Get to my YouTube channel and listen to what we discussed. It was mouthful. So today we are getting to part two because we didn't finish. Yeah. So as we start off, it is important for me to highlight a few things. Like I have to continue reminding you to merge. Make a difference. Go beyond the obvious. GBO. Be GBO. Be GBO teachers. Be GBO parents. Be GBO uh, students. Uh, GLGL, give love, get love. Who can remind me what did I say triple L means? What did I say triple L means? Who can remind me? Anyone? Just unmute yourself and shout it out. Triple L, what is that? love Awesome. Thank you so much. You're such a wonderful student. Lifelong learning. Be triple L's. Be triple L. Be a lifelong learner. Because knowledge is, uh, we usually say knowledge is powerful. And you know the meaning of that? It means when you know something beyond what other people know, you become powerful because you have something new that you can present to a group of people and they will be able to listen to you because you're giving them something that they didn't know. 
So when you become a lifelong learner, you become powerful because you get in contact with the most current information in circulation because uh, you are able to catch what is happening in the world and you'll be able now to share with your maybe your colleagues and and the like so lifelong learning very very important and even as we talk about education for sustainable development remember we are talking about the sustainable change because we want to transform the world we want to transform our lives we want to have a better future and for us to do that we need to have a clear direction of where we are going and for us to get that clear direction, we also must think about how to be motivated at all times to be lifelong learners, to keep on making a difference, to keep on going beyond the obvious, do that which people um, uh, imagine that you cannot do, do it and get a result and give love, get love. And by doing that, you are actually shaping the path. You are improving your physical environment. You are engaging people of like-minded like you. Uh, you are working with, um, um, with everyone that is useful, everyone that is ready to work with you to be able to make the difference we are talking about. And even as we get deeper and uh, keep on learning how we are going to, 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 to put ESD, integrate ESD in our curriculum, then we must always think about the three H. I have put the three H in the hand like this because this is very, very important. Something that is on your palm, it's something that you cannot ignore. Yeah, the head, the heart, and the hands. So it is important to have what you are learning, put it in your head, appreciate the information you are getting, and let's go down and uh, and uh, uh, go down and uh, and uh, do what and implement using our hands. Yeah, we need to go and uh, do all that. Now, last week, of course, we covered um, yeah, uh, how to integrate ESD into the curriculum. We looked at a few case studies. We talked about the holistic approach and we looked at the key stages and considerations when it comes to the curriculum development process and how we can bring in ESD. So today we want to focus on a cross-disciplinary approach in curriculum development to foster a comprehensive understanding of sustainability. Yeah, The reason as to why we have to talk about the cross-disciplinary approach is because we want to break down subject silos. Remember when we went to the a breakout rooms last week, we were able to, uh, one group came out and really discussed about how we will be able to, uh, to, to bring on board different subjects into <laughs> one similar uh, uh, project or have a similar problem and involve different expertise uh, to be able to come up with a solution for that particular uh, problem. Now, we are talking about um, how to merge the subjects together to form a cohesive learning experience. This is very, very important. Uh, the first thing that <clears throat> we will have to put in mind is the fact that we need to be ready to share, share knowledge. Yeah, sharing of knowledge is very, very important. I usually say when you get into a collaborative field, 
be ready to share information. Remember, sharing is inspiring. And uh, knowledge is non-rivalry. When you share, you don't uh, reduce the knowledge that you have. What? Yeah? Sorry for that. When you share, you don't reduce the information that you have in your, in your head. Because knowledge is the rivalry, no one can rival you. So we are going to, I want us to, to write this down. As I grab a glass of water, can you write number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six to seven in your notebook? I want you to get into breakout rooms for 10 minutes so that you discuss how you can make use of these methods of collaborative learning to be able to come up with a strong project or a strong solution that is sustainable, to be able to break down the subject silos. So we have skills and resources among group members. We have collaborative learning techniques. Try to explore some of those techniques. Um, talk about self-reflection, talk about critical thinking, talk about allowing for peer-to-peer -peer teaching and learning, and also talk about communication and collaboration. Are you ready? Are you ready to go to breakout rooms? Let me see somebody shouting a yes. Yes, that Terry. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome. So I want to take you to breakout rooms and um, just share that because you are, let me see if I can have six people in a room so that everybody can get an opportunity to share. So just join that room when it comes to your screen. Start discussing immediately. Just open your mics because you are few. You can't make noise. Uh, discuss. Talk about the four, the seven methods of collaborative learning that will help us break the silos when it comes to cross-disciplinary learning in education for sustainable development. So one of you to take leadership and the rest of you be free to contribute. I will pick on any group to share their insights. Joseph, you can go to room, room one. Sarah, go to room two. 
George, please join room three. Samsung, uh, just go and see what people are doing. Go to room four. Jonathan, go to room five. Awesome, thank you very much. I can see people busy talking, discussing. Room six, Chris, you didn't join room six. What happened? Caroline, please go to room six and tell people there to, to talk. We are talking about sharing knowledge, how we can share knowledge without fearing that anyone is going to defeat us. We are talking about skills and resources among group members because we are endowed differently. We are endowed differently. So if we can uh, maximize on the different skills and resources that we have as group members or uh, subject teachers or whatever, then we are going to, to succeed. Ruth Orieko is asking for help. Let me go to group room one to see. Uh, Ruth, you called for help. Any problem in room one? Are you people talking? I'm not seeing anybody talking. Diana? Hi. Uh, Hi. Yes. We, um, we, because of the audio, we're having issues that Ruth was asking. She was also saying she had an audio problem. With regards to the poem, but the other members, I'm not sure if they can hear. Okay, now that you, okay, maybe they need to un unmute themselves. Everybody, maybe you unmute yourself so that you can. Yes, Ruth, I came here because I... you called for help. Hi. The points, I never wrote them down. Uh huh. Yes, I never had a notebook around, so I never wrote them down. So we have uh, sharing uh, knowledge. Sharing knowledge. Skills and resources among group members. Uh -huh. Collaborative learning techniques. Collaborative learning techniques. Self-reflection. Self-reflection. Communication and collaboration. Communication and collaboration. Uh, critical thinking. Critical thinking. And allowing for peer-to-peer -peer teaching and learning. Allowing for peer-to-peer -peer 
teaching, teaching and learning. learning. Yeah, yeah, you can discuss that. Allow me to go to room four to help someone else. Mm -hmm. Is and that okay? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Jonathan. Yes. Jonathan, you didn't go to a breakout room. Uh, Samuel, Mutuku, and Hasha. Maybe what you need to do is to discuss in this plenary uh, room. You can discuss. We are discussing methods of collaborative learning, the seven of them. You can open your mics and just start discussing. Good evening. Yeah. Welcome, welcome on board. Welcome on board. Yeah, people are in uh, breakout rooms. Uh, because you are late, I want to request that maybe you just discuss from this um, plenary room. Mary Ngugi, Samuel Mutuku, Caroline Wandere, uh, thank you for joining the meeting. Mary Mutua, thank you too for joining the meeting. We are talking about methods of collaborative learning. And we were saying that uh, it is important to, to break subject silos, individualism, yeah? Doing things alone. It's important to put people together, people with different skills and resources, because we are endowed differently. And then think about the collaborative learning techniques that we can employ to be able to, to work uh, harmoniously for us to get a solution to a particular challenge that we are working on. And uh, in the process of collaborative learning, self-reflection is very, very key because it's important to think about uh, what you are doing, how you are, um, how you are, the role you are playing in the collaborative um, activity, uh, the difference you are making, the the gap you are feeling, and so on and so forth. So I think ten minutes are done. Let me bring people back. Yeah, this is Diana Rumuan. I can see they are very busy.
Okay, they are coming back to the plenary so that we can continue. So it's one minute, then they will be here with us. <laughs> So even as we talk about cross-disciplinary learning, it's important to consider the fact that um, uh, critical thinking is, is key. Critical thinking is key because even as we collaborate, we have to purpose to be critical thinkers for us to be able to solve that challenge. Yeah, James, are you in the room? Please, if you're in the room, I need your assistance. Oh, James, are you in the room? Not yet. Welcome back. To your the Thank you. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Which group is ready to start sharing because we don't want to waste a lot of time? Uh, George, you are in which group? You are in which room? George Mboga. I was in room three. Room three, can you tell us what, yes, what transpired in room three? Okay, so in room three, we were looking at uh, uh, those particular disciplinary uh, uh, the, the areas, and we were much interested in uh, the, 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 the first one, that is critical thinking. Uh -huh. And uh, in, our, um, in our discussion, one of the members, that is Edna, was uh, explaining to us, uh, how critical thinking can be applied in a, uh, in a learning session. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was giving us an example of uh, mathematics, mm -hmm. where, you can always, uh, where you can always give the students puzzles. Uh, and uh, an example is coming out clearly that at times when maybe you want to set maybe an exam, you'll uh, be interested in uh, a situation whereby the students are left to get to understand the concept more more deeper mm -hmm. and uh, the puzzles can be in various forms uh, a good example that was coming out was uh, situations whereby at times uh, maybe there is a uh, uh, there's a man and maybe there is a tree that is carrying a snake and then in the process of maybe whatever you're talking about, you say uh, down here, there is a crocodile that maybe wants to, to eat maybe this particular person. At the same time, you want to uh, maybe climb the tree, up the tree, there's a snake. So the kind of decision this student would make or the kind of judgment this student would make so that uh, he gets rid of this particular situation will uh, enable that aspect of uh, uh, critical thinking. Uh, he will, he or she will have to uh, make right judgments after having consulted which is the best way to go about it. Uh, and then there's also something on peer teaching and learning, and it is coming out that uh, peer teaching, uh, peer learning is uh, is the is most effective because the students get to uh, explain concepts among themselves better. And at times you realize the way maybe a student will relay information to the other will differ from maybe how the teacher will relay. And we're looking at an example whereby there are some situations whereby there are mathematical concepts. Maybe uh, a question is tested three plus dash is equal to seven. And you realize that in such a situation, uh, if, 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 if the student explains to the other, like, what is the meaning of this dash? Uh, what what can increase that you get seven? It, it, it came out clearly that maybe uh, you get a student who is better in that particular area will be in a position to tell this student that this dash means 
there is something that needs to be added to uh, to, to three so that you can it. And uh, unlike maybe a teacher bringing out the concept. So it was coming out clearly peer to peer teaching and learning is effective and uh, get, uh, makes the concept uh, a bit simplified. That is uh, uh, what uh, I captured, though more I yet to uh, arrive from the discussion. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you so much. Another group that wants to share what they learned. Thank you so much, George, for being generous with information. Uh, remember I said knowledge is non-rivalry. When you share, you gain. You gain more. Who wants to share? Who feels like they had something interesting that they would like to share to the plenary? Ruth? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I was in room one. Yes. So we were with Diana. Yeah. So in room one, we talked about allowing peer to peer teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. We realized that this one enables uh, learning to take place very fast. Because with peer, with peer, they want peer to share knowledge or make others understand also what should be done. Mm -hmm. So it makes learning to be faster and efficient. Mm -hmm. We also talk about critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we said that you can see a port, but uh, apart from seeing a port, you can see, uh, you can think outside the box, mm -hmm. think of what is made of, think of the importance of that thought. Mm -hmm. So critical thinking also enable collaborative learning to take place. Awesome. And then the, mm -hmm. uh, we also talk about collaborative learning techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think these are the techniques like uh, maybe sharing. Mm -hmm. So the learners or the the learning will take place mm -hmm. when there is collaboration mm -hmm. among learners, mm -hmm. which is br brought about by communication. Mm -hmm. When they communicate and get each other properly, learning will take place collaboratively. Mm -hmm. I think Diana also can share as we were together with her. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for bringing on board uh, the aspect of collaborative learning techniques. Maybe I need mm -hmm. to give you some insight, some information on what can be done. When we talk about collaborative learning techniques, here are some of the techniques. I, I want you to go and um, maybe discuss further with your colleagues or your friends or your family members, how that can be done. Uh, but one is group discussions, that is one. Another one is peer teaching. Another one is think, pair, share. As in think, get a partner and start talking. And uh, we also have uh, this one that they call um, jigsaw, jigsaw method, where each member of a group is responsible for mastering a specific part of the material, and then they teach it to the rest of the group, yeah? So it is jigsaw method, yeah? One person to the other, to the other like that. And then there is um, role play, very, very important. We also have interactive simulations. Interactive simulations, we can have debates, we can have PBL, Remember what uh, Dr. Maina told us about PBL. We have project-based learning, place-based learning, and problem-based learning. So you can bring on board uh, the PBL uh, learning methods. And then you can also think about uh, case-based learning, analyzing real-world cases, which encourages collaboration, and uh, also problem solving, uh, the students or you are able now to apply the theoretical knowledge in a, a real life situation. Mm, and many others, and many others. So you can, you can take those few 
to start with. So <clears throat> I think we have uh, really uh, taken some time to talk about the cross-disciplinary learning. And with that, I want to move to the next slide. How can we promote sustainable decision-making? Yeah, or rather how does ESD in curricula encourage learners to make informed and sustainable decisions? Who can try to answer this? <clears throat> how does ESD in curricula encourage learners to make informed and sustainable decisions? Anyone, anyone, just unmute yourself and give your voice. <clears throat> I have several ESD champions in the room. Wahundura, please tell us, how does ESD in curricula encourage learners to make informed and sustainable decisions? Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ruth, oh, no problem, go ahead. If there's no one else who wants to talk, go ahead. Yes, I think ESD in curricula encourage learners to make informed and sustainable decisions. Uh, simply because the methods we are taught here will help us make learning easier and have positive thinking about learning. Mm -hmm. For example, we just say lifelong mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. Make a difference. These are positive thinking mm -hmm. that will help us make informed and sustainable decisions in learning. Mm -hmm. I think from that point, you can take on. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Everybody go to the reactions and flower, Ruth. Thank you so much, Ruth. Yeah, in essence, what Ruth is saying is that education for sustainable development in curricula plays a, a, a key role in empowering learners to make informed and sustainable decisions. And um, together with what Ruth has shared, <clears throat> we can also say that uh, ESD cultivates critical thinking skills, which enables learners to analyze information, evaluate evidence and consider multiple perspectives. And by so doing, like you can look at this student here, this student is having these three perspectives at the same time. Yes, maybe, no, you know, we are talking about critical thinking and critical thinking is really a powerful tool when it comes to uh, promoting sustainable decision making. By adapting a system, a systems thinking approach, uh, students understand the interconnectedness uh, uh, between, remember, we talked about the social, the economic, and the environmental uh, aspects of sustainability. So the students will be able to understand how these three pillars are interconnected, leading to more comprehensive decision making. Uh, and also ESD exposes learners to complex sustainability challenges, such as climate change, you've heard of biodiversity loss, you've heard of uh, social inequalities, um, through in-depth explorations of these issues, students develop uh, an understanding that informs their decision-making process, which is very, very, important. It's also important to note that education for sustainable development emphasizes the application of sustainable principles in various contexts. Learners are encouraged to consider the environmental, social, and economic impacts in their decisions, fostering a holistic approach that prioritizes long-term sustainability over short-term gains, yeah? And uh, very, very important is the ethical um, considerations. 
Remember, ethics is a, a fundamental component in ESD. Learners engage in discussions about ethical considerations related to sustainability, promoting an awareness of the moral implications of their decisions. Uh, this ethical foundation guides them towards choices that align with principles of, let's say, fairness, justice, kindness, responsibility, peace, and so on and so forth. And uh, it is also important to think about knowledge when it comes to critical thinking or promoting sustainable decision making, uh, because uh, ESD often incorporates practical experience and problem solving activities. As much as the students are going to learn, they have to take this knowledge and make it uh, practical in a way that uh, they identify a problem and get into uh, problem solving activities for them to get a solution to that particular challenge. Students engage in real world projects. That is the beauty about ESD. I love it so much because you can see the students becoming very creative, getting involved in real life situations, projects, applying a theoretical knowledge like um, George said, the mathematics that uh, the students learn in class uh, to find solutions to sustainability challenges. This is actually hands-on experiences which enhance the ability to make effective and practical decisions. ESD also encourages active participation and engagement in decision-making processes. Students may be involved in school or community initiatives, allowing them to experience the decision-making dynamics associated with sustainability projects. In other words, we will be empowering our students. We will be empowering our children when they are participating, when they are the ones taking the lead, when they are the ones explaining what they have done and how they've done it and how that is going to make an impact. Uh, because ESD prompts learners to explore sustainable alternatives, whether, uh, let's say, in energy consumption, waste reduction, uh, consumer choices, etc. Students are encouraged to analyze and choose options that have less environmental impact and contribute to sustainability goals. Another thing about promoting sustainable decision making uh, is that uh, ESD instills a future-oriented mindset. Remember when we started how I introduced education for sustainable development? I said education for sustainable development is education that enables us to meet our needs today without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And so ESD instills a future-oriented mindset. Learners are encouraged to consider the long-term consequences of their decisions on both local and global scales. And hence, uh, having that, um, we call it a forward thinking approach, which contributes to decision-making that aligns with sustainable development objectives. Uh, what else? When it comes to promoting sustainable decision-making, there is a lot. Uh, in fact, when we talk about global awareness, ESD fosters global awareness and, uh, of course, cultural sensitivity. Uh, since students consider the global dimensions of their decisions and recognize the diverse perspectives and practices related to sustainability, contributing to more inclusive and culturally sensitive decision making. And so ESD promotes a culture of lifelong learning and adaptability. As students stay informed about evolving sustainability challenges and solutions, they are better equipped to adapt their decision-making strategies in responsive to changing circumstances. 
ESD is very powerful because you become adaptable. You are able to, 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 to embrace the skill of accepting change. I wish we were uh, live. I wish we were in a room uh, discussing this so that we can do various activity that will help us embrace change. But those that are facilitated learning for, uh, they know what we usually do when it comes to uh, change and uh, accepting change. Another thing about uh, promoting sustainable decision making is that uh, ESG will encourage learners to reflect on their personal values and beliefs. You can see how ESG is rich. Because when we talk about personal values, of course, we are talking basically about uh, the, the simple things like love, care, um, uh, honesty, and so on and so forth. Uh, this helps students align their decisions with values that prioritize sustainability, fostering a sense of personal responsibility to positive change which is very, very, very important. And uh, ESG incorporates the use of technology for sustainable solutions. Students learn how technology can be harnessed to address environmental challenges, providing them with tools and knowledge to make tech-enabled decisions that contribute to sustainability. I, I usually enjoy uh, when I see students bringing on board their mobile phones or their laptops or whatever uh, um, a tool, technology tool to try and solve a particular challenge. And so ESD promotes continuous evaluation and improvement uh, because learners are encouraged to reflect on the outcomes of their decisions assess their impact and identify areas for improvement. This is very, very important. And so ESD in curricula empowers learners to make informed and sustainable decisions by fostering, uh, let's say critical thinking, ethical considerations, uh, practical experience, like real life, uh, doing things that are real in life, and of course, a holistic understanding of sustainability challenges. And you can see why we really need to, 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 to incorporate ESD in our curricula. So last time we talked about these animals and we said, as you practice education for sustainable development, of course, the first thing that you will see is not the small rat, you will see the big elephant. So you will start by trying to get solutions to the big elephant. In the process of solving the big elephants, you come down to the zebras, the donkeys, the dogs, the cats, the, you know, until you get to the very tiny, tiny things within the same projects. And so one, one problem can take a whole year for you to get uh, solutions that you can call sustainable solutions. Then how do we apply principles in practice? What is the importance of applying ESD principles in real world scenarios? Who can tell us? Who can tell us what is the importance? Let me just pick on any one of you to talk. Yeah, please just unmute yourself and talk. Thank you, George, for offering to talk. Go ahead. George, I saw you unmute. Just unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I will say that uh, in is uh, when uh, they're looking at them, mm -hmm. it will improve their mastery because 
once they look at that chart and they see the figures, maybe what is it, the mastery will always be uh, effective because he will keep uh, thinking in mind of what he saw in the picture and mm -hmm. it may not escape his or her attention. So, uh, applying that principle is okay. And that is why even in class, you realize that at times when we, when we teach, we use even the, 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 the charts like the teaching aids whereby when the student is able to see that chart and whatever is written in it, then uh, it really improves the mastery. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay let me unmute people. Thank you. Thank you, George. Yeah, and that is it. So as the ESD family, let's encourage engagement in projects that address sustainability challenges. Uh, because in the realm of education, the principles of education for sustainable development go beyond theory to become catalysts for tangible change in the real world. The significance of applying ESD principles in uh, practical scenarios um, actually empowers individuals and communities to navigate the complexities of our global landscape sustainability. And so we will think about um, solution-oriented thinking because ESD equips learners with the ability to approach challenges with a solution-oriented mindset. Yeah, so students are not going to, to bring the problem but they are seeking for the solution. And so by integrating sustainable practices into curricula, we nurture a generation that seeks innovative solutions to, to environmental, social, and economic issues. ESG also fosters a sense of global citizenship by instilling values of responsibility and interconnectedness. As individuals, it's important to understand the impact of um, our actions on a global scale, yeah? Like students become proactive contributors to a more sustainable and equitable world. And also when we talk about uh, applying the ESD principles, we're also talking about hands-on learning real world application of ESD principles, which involves hands-on learning experiences, whether through community projects, environmental initiatives, or collaborative ventures, learners will actively engage with the principles they've acquired, turning knowledge into meaningful actions. Like I know of several schools that have now picked up the aspect of planting a tree and tagging a value to that tree. For example, if a student is struggling with honesty all the time they are lying, all the time they are lying, they want to grow honesty in their, themselves. When it comes to the environmental day, they plant trees, each one of them tags their tree with a value or a virtue they want to grow in themselves. And uh, communities that embrace ESD principles are better equipped with uh, uh, aspects of uh, ways to face uh, the challenges of the present and of course the uncertainties of the future because ESD promotes resilience by encouraging adaptive strategies, resource efficiency, and of course community-led initiatives. In real world scenarios, informed decision making becomes a linchpin to sustainable development. Why? Because ESD empowers individuals to critically access situations, consider long term consequences, and make choices that align with um, ecological, social, and uh, economic sustainability. And so that is why the Bible says in James 1, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. To do what it says, yeah? So when we come to the practical aspect, in actual sense, ESD 
I usually look at ESD as the Bible. That is why for this presentation, I was looking for which verse can speak to this slide. Which verse can I attach to this? When you look at my presentation for the curriculum development, there is a verse that speaks in every slide. And so it is important to talk about empowering learners for the present, empowering learners for the present. Um, uh, at your own time, I want you to discuss how ESD empowers learners with practical skills and knowledge relevant to current challenges, and then highlight examples of immediate applications in daily life. But we need to also talk about this. This diagram is very, very important. When you get to this presentation, please pause here and look around all this. This is how to empower learners uh, for the present. It's very, very important. Let us not just assume that they will know. It is important to empower learners for what is happening now. Yeah? Hands on, minds on. Give them open-ended tasks. Yeah, engage them wholly. Engage their mind, engage their body, engage their hearts. Um, help them to become productive and persistent in their struggles. Have them increase in creativity and innovation. Have them initiate uh, projects, learner initiated, directed, and uh, determined projects, and so on and so forth. So education for sustainable development, as I said, goes beyond theoretical knowledge. Uh, because it actively empowers learners with practical skills and relevant insights to address the pressing challenges of our time. Now, here is how ESD serves as a transformative force, equipping learners or individuals with the tools they need to navigate and contribute to the complexities of the modern world. As we've already discussed, of course, uh, we have um, critical thinking. Uh, we have um, the, fact, the, fact, the fact that we also have practical skills, which are honed through hands-on experiences and project-based learning, allowing the learners to actively engage with sustainable practices, whether through community projects, eco-initiatives, or collaborative endeavors, uh, they are able to apply what they learn in class in real life situations. The ESD also equips learners with skills in resource management, promoting efficient use of natural resources and minimizing environmental impact. Because in ESD, we talk about making use of what you have, yeah? making use of what is locally available. So education for sustainable development is not supposed to be an expensive venture because you are considering what you have at hand. An ESD-focused curriculum instills a love for learning and adaptability. Now, I think we need to discuss this. What is the importance of continuous growth? in a rapidly changing world. What do you think? Who can go first? What is the importance of continuous growth in a rapidly changing world? I'm avoiding the chat because these are long sentences. I just want you to talk. Let us talk, let us talk, let us talk. Just unmute and voice your, because the room has got many people, just voice your, your answer. What is the importance of continuous growth? Yes. Victor, thank you. Ruth, Ruth, please oh. allow Victor and then you'll come next. Okay, I think what I'm picking yes. is one from the aspect of the social dimension. Yeah. That there's an honor whom we have in class, 
-hmm. is also expected Hello. to go and fit in the society. Mm -hmm. For them to go and fit in the society, mm -hmm. the aspect of uh, the lifelong learning mm -hmm. will come in when they develop the social skills from the ESD. Yeah. It will make them to fit in the society. Awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Very important. Ruth, you are saying something. Yes, I wanted to say uh -huh. uh, this will make learners uh, change with, as they change with changes, mm -hmm. then they, will, they won't be caught unaware mm -hmm. of what is happening around them. Mm -hmm. And they will develop we are what not will getting help. The voice, I don't know whether he has, he has a network challenge. Oh. Yes, are you getting me? I am. Hello. I am getting you. Yes, I'm saying mm -hmm. there's a story that says change with changes. Mm -hmm. This will make learners uh, uh, get to know what is happening around them mm -hmm. and come up to grow to the standards by that time. Awesome. Wow. Meaning mm -hmm. <laughs> they won't be they won't be lagging behind. Mm -hmm. They will pros they will be prospering. Awesome. Thank yes. you so much. Hasha, Hasha, your hand is up. Unmuted. Hello. Yes, Hasha. Hello. It's Caroline or Hasha? Ross. Okay, Caroline. Ross. Let's start with you. Yes. It will encourage the developers to become problem solvers in their own community or mm -hmm. their own uh, environment in case there is an issue. They'll be quick to solve the problem in the course of getting adapted to the situation. So that's why I think it should be a long, a lifelong running and adaptability, because it will encourage them to become problem solvers and they'll become very creative in every situation they find in their life. They will treat upon their parents or the teachers to help them solve the problems. I think that's what I have. Okay, thank you so much. Hadija, your hand is up. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to add about personal development. Mm -hmm. With continuous growth, it will contribute to personal development and fulfillment. So it's so good learning new things, acquiring new skills and gaining knowledge. It enhances self-esteem, confidence, and sense of accomplishment and also the issue of resilience. So the ability to continuously grow, mm -hmm. it will foster resilience mm -hmm. and the individuals who embrace change and see challenges as opportunities for growth mm -hmm. will be better equipped than mm -hmm. those who do not see challenges for opportunity, as opportunities. Oh, nice. Yes. Educa in education for sustainable development, we see challenges as opportunities. Techno, your hand is up. Unmute yourself. Hasha? Yeah? Go ahead. Hasha, are you talking? Uh, we can't hear you. Let's allow techno. Maybe you increase the volume in your in your gadget, whatever gadget you're using. Techno, unmute yourself. Techno, come on. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Continuous growth mm -hmm. or continuous development. Mm -hmm. It keeps learners with new skills, mm -hmm. new knowledge, mm -hmm. new attitude mm -hmm. to be able to navigate through mm -hmm. the continuously development, developing world so that they can fit into the new changes that are taking place awesome. in this world. Mm. Awesome. In essence, what you're saying is that... Um... Because the world is increasingly interconnected, continuous growth facilitated facilitates a global mindset. That is what you're saying? Yes, exactly. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes? 
Rose, and, and then we move on. Yeah, thank you, Daktari and the group. Uh -huh. As you continue learning, you will be able to unlearn some things. You relearn others. Uh -huh. uh, it is the new norm because our forefathers were illiterate, but if we don't continue learning, we become the 21st illiterate people. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That is, those are very strong points. Awesome. Unlearn, relearn, and learn. Eh? Which one comes first? Unlearn, learn, and eh? learn, unlearn, relearn. Nice. Yeah, if you look at this picture, we are saying each one of us has got their own path of growth. And so we don't need to compete with one another when it comes to learning. Because I will learn, go to this side, go to this level. You will learn, go to this side, get to this level, meet these people. And together we form a world that is empowered with people who are knowledgeable, people who have, who have learned a lot and they can apply to, to make the world a better place for everyone. Because the dynamic nature of our global landscape, driven by technology advancements, societal shifts, and economic transformations, underscore the need for us to embrace continuous learning and development. Yeah? Because technology evolves at an, a pace that we cannot even talk about. There is that aspect of things coming and new things all the time when it comes to technology. And uh, as, uh, is it Ross who said that uh, continuous growth fosters resilience is very, very important. And the world is becoming so dynamic. So it is important to continue learning. And uh, continuous learning, uh, learners are more likely to foster in innovation and uh, creativity because you become better with time. Sorry, I hope we, I'll be able to finish today. Then uh, fostering critical thinking. Uh, this we shared in our breakout rooms. I don't want us to get so much into this, uh, but it's important to, when you get these slides, these slides are too rich. Take time and go through them on your own. Try to understand. Uh, what I I wanted to talk about here, what we wanted to discuss because of time. So in critical thinking, <clears throat> you need to discover and explore, negotiate and cooperate, test and revise, integrate and apply, inform and describe. Very, very important that even after you have integrated and applied, you have a result to share. That is why we need everyone to share their success stories. Once you have done it, you have the result. Don't keep it to yourself. Share, yeah? Inform the world about the change that you have made because the wise in heart accept commands, but, the, but a chattering fool comes to reign. So we need to be wise so that we are able to bring together the various ideas that you have considered in order to co consolidate and articulate new understanding. Um, and of course, begin to clarify what you need to know, what you already know, and what information you have about a particular issue, a particular topic. Look at that particular topic more closely start to be more directed and purposeful in seeking information. Consider different perspectives, engage in discussions with others, as we already explored in an earlier slide, and weigh up the evidence, test out different ideas and alternatives. And uh, the circle continues and continues and continues. We have already talked about uh, building global awareness. These are principles of ESD. Uh, we need to talk about uh, how ESD broadens learners' perspectives. 
fostering global awareness and interconnectedness, very, very important. Uh, because this, look at look at this this picture. Who can explain what they can see in this picture? Let us just talk about the picture and we'll have uh, discussed the importance of understanding global challenges and collaboration when it comes to seeking for solutions. Who can, who can discuss that, that uh, a picture for us? There's no picture. You're not seeing a picture? No. Uh, everyone is not seeing a picture. The picture is there, Dr. Me, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing uh, it's there, you know. You've now, yes, the picture is there. Can you explain what you can see? I can see connections, uh -huh. connectivity. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So in essence, what we are saying, who is talking? Dina, you want to say something? Yeah, I said I can see connectivity. Uh -huh. So we, we need to network globally, collaborate or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That is why it wasn't fair for me to just keep quiet because I'm in Canada. We yeah, can still sure. connect, we can still talk, we can still learn from yeah. one another, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Victory. Yes. Yes, George, you want to say something? No, I was just responding to you saying that you are in Canada and you can still share with us here is, which is what I was responding to. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, because <laughs> education for sustainable development serves as a powerful vehicle for ex expanding learners' perspectives nurturing global awareness and fostering interconnectedness by embedding uh, e global context into educational content, exposing learners to diverse cultures, uh, environments, and challenges same. worldwide. Uh, and that is why when I go to you, when you go get to my YouTube channel, I am now talking about um, what I am seeing in Canada that we can pick on and and also do something related to that to solve our challenges back home. Because I realized even um, very senior people in the country, they use uh, the taxpayers' money to travel abroad just to go and enjoy and come back and keep quiet. Yeah, They don't even share what they have gained outside there. What have they seen? People go to Israel just to see what Israel looks like, enjoy, enjoy, come back. And they don't even implement anything that they have learned. And so if you get to my YouTube channel, I have discussed some of the things that I'm seeing in Canada that if we tried them at home, we can even have a better country than we have today. And so ESD highlights the interconnectedness of environmental issues on a global scale. Learners will understand that environmental challenges such as climate change and biodiversity loss are far-reaching consequences that transcend nat national borders. Like now our winter was affected because winter usually starts in December. People start seeing snow, a lot of snow in December. But this year, December just passed. January, like it wasn't that much. Because of what? Because of climate change and, of course, biodiversity loss. So we need to, to really put this into, into mind. And then we have nurturing environmental stewardship. And we are very good in this as Kenyans, uh, even Ghanaians. My Ghanaian friends in the room, I know, you are doing a lot when it comes to the environment. Yeah? Can you share personal or classroom initi initiative promoting environmental stewardship? 
Anybody who can share what you have done to promote environmental stewardship? In the last meeting, um, one of us shared what she is doing with the students, that they are planting trees. And now I want to encourage people who are in asking students to plant trees. Can you ask students to plant fruit trees? Yeah? If you if the students plant fruit trees, then they will experience sustainability in the sense that they are able to eat the fruit themselves. They plant it, they can sell the fruit. And uh, of course, the fruit they planted is uh, taking care of the environment. So the three aspects of sustainability are in it. So during your own time, um oh, okay sorry there was a prop that was coming i needed to understand what it wants to do oh uh, i want us to to go to our whatsapp groups now whichever group you are because i want to see which group has many members what is the role of ESD in nurturing a sense of environmental stewardship and responsibility? You can either pick the first one or the second one. Discuss how learners become advocates for environmental conservation and stewardship. Go to your WhatsApp group and just chat, just say something about any of these two questions. Maybe that will help others to wake up and get to know that there is learning happening. Learning is going on. I'm there checking the groups because I'm in all the groups where we have ESD going on. If you are in the meeting and you are in a certain group, just go there and write something about either the first question or the second question. What is the role of ESD in nurturing a sense of environmental stewardship and responsibility? Or discuss how learners become advocates. Just write the answer, just write the answer. You don't have to write the question, just write the answer. Write the answer. Good, I can see some answers coming, good. I can see some answers see coming. Some. Thank you. Why are people saying they didn't have the link? Didn't I share the link with everyone? Thank you. Hello? Yes. Hello, that's... Yes, continue. Just, just write a message. Just write a message in your WhatsApp group. I want to see which WhatsApp group. Hello? Yes. Who is there? Hello, Doctor. Hello, hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, there are some members who are not in the WhatsApp groups, including me. Oh, you're not in How did you get this information? If you're not in a WhatsApp group, take my number. I will add you to the ESD champion group. Thank you, Hadija, I can see you. Encourage learners to participate in uh, local campaigns. Good. Thank you, Hadija, I can see you. Uh, if you're not in a WhatsApp group, don't worry. Can you maybe that we, you, talk to us? Talk to us. Tell us your answer now. Learners can plant trees to conserve soil. Thank you so much. 
Oh, this is who? Uh, your name, please. Yes, the Hello, other. Hello, eh? Yes. I think by also involving the learners in environmental con conservation, like activities like uh, putting up dustbin within the school compound. Awesome. Having the waste bins for separating waste. Yeah, let them have the dustbins, not just to put the papers and the, the banana peels together. Let them separate the waste so that they can be able to, to take care of uh, the earth, reduce, reuse, recycle. I will talk about that in one of the presentations. So we are talking about saving our cities, saving our soil, saving our air, and saving our water. <clears throat> very, very important. Thank you. I'm seeing people are very active on the wall. Thank you. The ESD champions, you're doing well. <clears throat> Dr. Terry, what about we who are not on the wall? Uh, I said you discuss here, then we will add you to the wall. Please just uh, text me, side chat me so that I add you to the ESG champions wall. James is there waiting. Thank you, James, for the good work you're doing. You are appreciated. Thank you, Karibu. Learners can reduce soil erosion. Thank you, learners as advocates of environmental conservation, get involved in cleaning. <clears throat> Good, ensure prudent use of water and other resources. Learners can pass messages to their family members about environment conservation. Introduce learners to environmental role models and activist, uh, activists who have made a positive impact or some through education of recycling, tree planting and environmental day or on your birthday. Thank you so much for that insight. Encourage learners to uphold integrity in disposal of waste, encourage girls to use reusable dignity pads. Awesome. Learners can train their peers on water conservation as a resource. Wow, there are so many, there are so many ideas coming on board. Keep their learning environment clean. Thank you so much. Thank you for that discussion going on on the WhatsApp groups. Mm, I can see. Somebody is saying they are traveling. It helps the learners to appreciate the environment and to know the responsibility that they maintain uh, the environment clean. For example, the environmental club that we have in the school, they are planting trees. You awesome. This is good. Thank you. Another thing. Good. Let's continue. We will continue discussing that. We will continue discussing that uh, in our groups because ESD is really interesting. If you, you take time to just get deep and deep and deep, there is so much to explore. And then there is the developing social responsibility, which is very, very important. Community engagement. Let us encourage everyone to participate in community activities. Because ESD uh, plays a vital role in instilling a sense of social responsibility and empathy towards diverse communities by promoting global citizenship education, encouraging learners to recognize their interconnectedness with diverse communities around the world, in actual sense, this global perspective fosters a sense of responsibility for addressing global challenges, including social and environmental issues. Uh, ESD often involves community engagement projects. Learners uh, actively participate in projects that address local 
social and environmental challenges. Through hands-on experiences, individuals develop a deep understanding of community needs and the importance of social responsibility. And another part that is very critical when it comes to developing social responsibility is the fact that ESD incorporates ethical considerations related to social responsibility. We engage in discussions about the ethical implications of our actions on diverse communities and thus promoting a sense of responsibility, um, like promoting social justice, equity, addressing human rights, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> because ESD um, integrates human rights education Learners explore the principles of human rights, equality, and social justice. The, the, the understanding of this is very, very important because it cultivates a commitment to upholding the rights of all individuals, irrespective of their backgrounds or their identity and so on and so forth. And so ESD is massive, my friends. If you get deep and deep and deep, you realize that what we need to live well is actually ESD, because ESD encourages the development of an inclusive curriculum. Teachers should incorporate diverse perspectives, voices, and experiences into their learning materials, uh, because this inclusivity helps learners appreciate the richness of diversity and uh, reinforces the importance of social responsibility. And so when we talk about social responsibility, the aspects of communication and collaboration uh, must be explored because that is what it means. Equipping for sustainable careers. When we talk about curriculum development, sorry, allow me just to go on board a few, just a few minutes. So that we finish, I have like two more slides to go. Uh, it is important to talk about sustainability careers. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because ESD uh, has a role in preparing learners for sustainable careers. We have careers like health and safety engineer, social compliance specialist, environmental and sustainability planner, renewable energy analysts, sustainability consultants, chemical engineers, um, civil engineers, environmental health and safety analysis analysts, sustainability coordinator, sustainability specialist, energy and lead analysts, ecologists, and so on and so forth. And so there are so many careers that if a student just focused on doing things sustainably, they can get into because ESD emphasizes cultural understanding and appreciation of diversity. So learners will explore different cultures, traditions and perspectives and thus Fostering, fostering the aspect of empathy towards the diverse communities. Uh, since this cultural awareness is essential, it is uh, really very essential when we talk about social responsibility. And um, now when we come to a pathway to sustainable careers, as I was saying, it's important to have the holistic understanding of sustainability. Uh, since ESD introduces learners to a holistic understanding of um, sustainability that is encompassing environmental, social, and economic dimensions, this comprehensive perspective will enable the learners to approach sustainability challenges with a well-rounded understanding. And that is where I'm always emphasizing don't just focus on environment, environment, environment. No, when you're doing something environmental, you have to bring in the social aspect and also bring in the economic aspect. 
Since ESD fosters critical thinking and problem solving skills, essential for addressing sustainability challenges, learners develop the ability to analyze situations, identify root causes and formulate innovative solutions. Uh, a skill set highly valued in sustainable careers. And so all these things, uh, when you look at them, uh, we are actually focusing on the three spheres of sustainability and the ethics aspect of it. Ethics is a core component of ESD because learners engage in discussions with ethical considerations related to sustainability, preparing them for careers where ethical decision-making is crucial, whether in corporate sustainability roles, policy-making, or environmental advocacy. Okay, uh, almost coming to the end, empowering for the future. Let us reflect on how we as educators, as individuals can contribute to empowering learners for a sustainable future, or rather can empower our children for a, a sustainable future. Can someone share one actionable idea you plan to implement in your teaching practice as you teach? How can you empower your learners for a sustainable future? One person, just one person to, to help us understand this. Rosemary, you want Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, if I want to help my learners for this sustainable program, mm -hmm. I would ensure that at least I assist them so that we plant the fruit trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, from planting it, I ensure they are also responsible in maintaining them. Mm -hmm. And by the end, it will, they will gain from it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so to thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Always reflect on the transformative potential of ESD in education. Yeah. Now, if we, 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 we need to look at the key points on how ESD empowers learners for both the present and the mm -hmm. future. It is important because education for sustainable development serves as a transformative force. Uh, all the t-shirts that we used to have at uh, the branding, we said at the back that ESD transforming the world. ESD serves as a transformative force, empowering learners for both the present and the future. Yeah. And this can be done as we've already discussed, having a holistic understanding of sustainability, very, very important. So be holistic, don't go one way. Don't go just like you are rearing chicken to, to sell eggs, that is just economic. You have to bring on board the environmental and, and the social. ESD cultivates critical thinking and problem solving skills. It promotes global awareness. Uh, ESD is actually a cornerstone when it comes to matters ethics, when it comes to values, when it comes to peace. Because learners engage in discussions about ethical considerations uh, as they do what they are doing uh, regarding their personal as well as professional lives and so on and so forth. And very important, ESD incorporates practical experience through project-based learning uh, activities, problem-based learning activities, place-based learning activities, and by so doing, uh, we are able to nurture innovation and entrepreneurship mindset. Yeah, it is very, very important to take note of this because if we are promoting ESG or empowering the future, then the mindset of being entrepreneurs, becoming innovative at all times. Learners are encouraged to explore creative solutions to sustainability challenges, preparing them 
for the future to be change makers uh, in future endeavors uh, as time goes by. And so ESD fosters networking and collaboration skills. Learners engage with professionals, organizations, and communities working towards sustainability, building connections with uh, one another. This can open doors to opportunities and collaborative efforts. And so do not limit yourself, do not limit your learners to connecting with other people in the world. So it is very, very important to reflect on what we have learned today. I know it was massive. Um, and I know from here, things are going to change in our learning institutions because we can now see the importance of education for sustainable development, isn't it? Yeah, now let's have a moment of reflection on the importance of holistic sustainability in curriculum development. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Proverbs 2 verse 10. Reflection is very, very important. Just be silent. Even when you go to any meeting, always have a moment of reflection. When you go to church, always have a, a moment of reflection. Consider what you have learned and see what you are picking out of it, what you're going to use, uh, and which steps are going to be your first steps. Okay, up to that point, any question? Anybody with a question? Anybody with an insight? If you feel like you are encouraged to go and start doing something, this is the time for you to voice out, to tell us. Anyone, we are finishing. This is the last slide in actual sense. Anybody with anything to say? Hadija, your hand is up. Mokaya, Aoga. Okay, let us start with Mokaya because Mokaya has not spoken. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mokaya. Okay, let me. Okay, to me. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Okay, I, I, okay. First, I want to appreciate your representation. Already in our school, we have started uh, some projects. Uh -huh. What I will do just to encourage uh, other teachers to join in, uh -huh. and that, uh, to, so that they can bring an impact to the community. I appreciate. Oh, Maybe sorry. I will send some uh, some photos. I will send some photos, and uh, we we compare. Awesome, nice. Mm -hmm. Are you in the ESD Thank group, you. Mokaya? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not in any group. Oh, so you send me, you have my number? Yeah, I have your number. Yeah, just send me a message and just tell me, add me to the group, I'll know which group you Thank want. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So anybody else who is not in the Education for Sustainable Development Champions group, please let me know so that you can be part of the team that is making a difference in the world. Uh, I am not in the group. I'm not in the group. Uh, what is your name? Rose Sogama. Uh, Rose, please side chat me. Let me add you to the group or side chat James. Is James in the room? I've been looking for you, James. Where are you? I'm also okay. not in any of the groups. Okay, say so chat me. Say so chat me. About, it is I've said, I've said I've chat you, Dr. Me and I've not seen any response. Okay, that I will good. add you to the groups. Thank you. Oh, same to me. Awesome. Just send me a message. I will add you to the groups. It's only that I wasn't prepared to pick the link and share on the chat. But I will like add, yeah, I'll add all of you to the group so that it is easier for you. Yeah, Hasha, yeah. you want to say something? Your hand has been up for a long Thank time. You. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ray. Um, okay. You can hear me? Yes. Yes, it was a lovely session. And um, one great takeaway I would say is 
uh, about the ethical thing mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, anything that we teach should not be one-sided mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. should have the economic and social uh, you know uh, not just something that that is my main takeaway from today's uh, lesson awesome. thank you thank you so much Hasha uh, awesome somebody else oh nice hello yes Biko yeah yes. Biko you've been watching uh, on the the top. yeah go ahead yes uh, doctor I think uh... unmute yourself Biko uh, as we as we teach uh -huh. we should start incorporating the esd in our in our daily teaching methods uh -huh. uh, these are i think will benefit learners uh, to attain meaningful learning rather than rote learning awesome. because it, it will be more practical and again most countries are now focused on the cbc uh -huh. in the cbc era uh -huh. i think it would be prudent to to at least make these students to be nurtured on the principles of based on the principles of ESD. Awesome. Like I'm, I'm so interested on the developing of social responsibility. Mm -hmm. It will it will foster <clears throat> some sense of um, some sense of clarity in ethical way of surviving and others in the society, mm -hmm. and uh, this will help to at least reduce the societal issues we are seeing uh, happening in our countries. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I could get time to just share some of the things that are just amazing in Canada, like respecting people's property. Mm? If you, you come around, we don't have like fences. Our houses are just open. Your car is just parked next to the road. You know, you leave it there for days. You will still get it intact. You go to the supermarket, you you pick stuff, you you pay by yourself. There's no one, as in, there is no one at the counter to take money from you. You just pay. Uh, you just clean what you have picked. You know, the amount of trust, it's because of ethics, yeah? So I wish I could just have these things practically done in my home country. I, I think I think we like Kenya, we can do it. I don't know why. Um our moral dignity has really de decayed. It's important. I think ESD can change, can change the world. ESD can change our country. Thank you so much. Uh somebody else wanted to speak. I'm taking a lot of your time. Who can pray for us? I, when I'm talking about education for sustainable development, sometimes I become emotional because I know ESD can change, the, can change, can transform our country. And if we have it in the curriculum and do it in the right way eh, and remove our personal feelings from it, like... No, it's not like we are competing who is going to do it better than the other. Doing what we can with the little resources that we have. Even if you are a teacher, just use the resources that you have at hand to make a difference, to help those learners become better. Don't just go to class to teach the syllabus, as in to, to finish what has been, been listed. Do this, do this, do... No, go there to to inspire the children, to make them start thinking about doing things right. That is more important than that content of uh, music or mathematics or whatever. Like in Canada, children here don't learn so many subjects. Four subjects are enough for a term, I mean. And in our country, we are giving children like 10 subjects, 20, what for, I mean. What we need to emphasize more is to grow the child, to become a better person in future. And when they grow up with the few subjects, they specialize and they become experts. So in our, li in our line, everybody's like trying everything, trying everything. No, let us 
mold experts who are ethical. And then we will be able to see a different country in the future. Okay? Anybody who can pray for us as we finish? Mashi, my number is 0724-717158. Please just inbox me. I will add you to the group as soon as possible. 0724-717158 is my number. Thank you. George, please pray for us. Eunice, I can see you're there. Jeroge, how have you been? Thank you. Let me pray. Yeah. Our dear Heavenly Master, Father, we want to thank you for the gift of life. We want to thank you for the gift of the opportunity that you've granted us as a family. Father, we were together in the same platform sharing ideas about how we can sustain our education countrywide. Father, you've guided us through the discussion and we pray that at this particular moment, we want to retire. Some of us want to sleep. Some of us want to engage into other activities. Father, guide us through the week so that when we meet again on Sunday, we can always do everything according to your will. I pray that short prayer be living and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Good night, Dr. Participants. <laughs> 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 <laughs>